When building a custom car audio system, it's not even a question. We have got to add the bass. I'm currently working on a full system install here on the channel, and our goal for this build is to add a substantial amount of musically accurate bass. So what subwoofers are we going to use? How can we pick the right size for our subwoofer enclosure so that it fits? Where is the box going in the vehicle? And what are the fabrication steps for making this custom subwoofer enclosure? I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Without further ado, let's get on into this. The first thing I need to do in order to start building the box in here is come up with a plan, and part one of coming up with a plan is getting dimensions. Now when you're taking dimensions for a subwoofer box for a trunk car, the main thing you really wanna be careful of is you wanna make sure you take dimensions of the actual opening here so that we can get the box in. The main limiting factor on this trunk is actually the height. It looks like it would be a lot, but once you actually have the box sitting in here and you figure out a 90 degree angle from where that plane would be, the height ends up only being about 15 and a half inches. Now before you say, oh, just slide the box from the inside, you can see that this trunk has these metal braces here that if you were trying to make the box taller and slide it into the trunk from the inside of the vehicle, these things here would severely limit your width. Now I definitely have the ability to make a very custom shaped enclosure in here that matches all of these profiles and takes up every last inch of usable air space, but the problem is I would never be able to get that box out of the trunk. I want to be able to pull the box out of the trunk if need be without destroying it, so what I've come up with is this wedge shape here. With this shape here, I'll be able to slide into the trunk and take up my width, which I plan to use of 34 inches. Big tip there for you guys, always cut the side profile of the enclosure before you build the box and make sure that you can fit that in. And when you do go to do your test fit, don't turn it like this and then go in, because obviously you wouldn't be able to do that with the finished enclosure. Hold it like it's a finished enclosure and make sure you test that fit. So first off, what subwoofers are we going to be using? For this build, we're gonna be using these JL Audio 13 W3 V3s. I picked these subs because they definitely have a long lasting reputation of being very musically accurate while digging nice and deep. In fact, the shop subwoofer build that I just did that's built into the workbench here, this is a 10 inch version of the W3 and I picked this one up about eight years ago. It's still going strong. I really like the sound out of these. As much as I would have loved to have gone with a ported enclosure, we definitely wanted to keep some room in the trunk so we've gone with sealed. Not to worry though, I've heard two of these in a sealed enclosure before and they get down. Now I also did quite a bit of testing off camera and I found that in this trunk, the trunk of these cars is actually sealed really, really well. With having the subwoofers firing backwards, which is typically the best orientation, I just wasn't getting as much output as when I was testing with the subwoofers firing forwards with my test setup subwoofer enclosure. If you wanna see the test process that I go through, you can check out the video up in the corner of the screen. So again, by doing that testing, we've decided we're gonna face our subwoofers forward into the cabin, which will work out great because in the middle of the seat, there is a fold down pass through that gives us access into the trunk. So here is our design blueprint here. We have all of our plans ready to go along with all of our dimensions. We did our test fit with this mock-up panel, so we are good to go. Let's start making our cuts. Here's a cool trick for you guys for cutting the perfect angle. A lot of times people will use these type of things and run it across the table saw, but I don't like doing that. I find it to be literally impossible to set this correctly so that you absolutely perfectly hit that line. So instead what I do is I measure out my dimensions from my design and I mark that line on the board. And then I take this second board that I've made a cut on. I know that this is exactly 25 and a half inches. That's just a random number. You don't have to use that number, but because I know this is 25 and a half inches, I can leave the fence set at that value. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick this up and I'm gonna align this edge here with this line that I cut and stick the two together using this double-sided template tape. I'll need to raise the blade a little bit further out of the table, but now when I run this cutting pass here, I know exactly where the blade is gonna be. It's gonna cut my panel perfectly.
All right guys, we've got all of our pieces made here, so now we can move on to assembly. The first thing we want to do is I'm going to assemble a side, the bottom, and the back of the enclosure together, because I just want to double check fitment into the trunk one more time. Since we now know that the enclosure fits, we can proceed with the rest of the assembly. It's difficult to get a good camera angle, and it's a little bit monotonous to watch anyway, the assembly process, so we're going to speed through this section here, but just know that I'm using Type Bond 2 premium wood glue to glue everything together. That adds the majority of the strength between the pieces and then I'm using a brad nailer to hold the boards together while that glue dries. So now I have the majority of the box assembled. I still need to add the baffle where the woofers will actually mount and we still need to cut the holes in those pieces for the woofers to mount. But there's something here that I want to address. Currently this is sitting on the face that will be facing the back of the car. So this is the bottom of the enclosure here and I want to actually mount the amplifiers on that back face of the box. So because the amps will be mounted to the box, I wanna make sure that this surface is really, really good and strong. So I'm gonna add some additional ribs on the inside here to prevent this panel from vibrating. If I were to just mount this piece in here, it kinda of has an unfinished edge, so I do wanna add some roundovers on these pieces first. To do this, I'll be using this quarter inch roundover here at the router. Now that I've got those pieces added in there, that back structure is a lot more rigid and it's nice and finished since I added those roundovers. So the next step here is I need to make my baffle board that's actually gonna hold the subs. So now I have the cutouts made for the subwoofer to mount inside, but I also want to do a flush mount baffle, a secondary baffle that the subwoofer is going to sit down in. Now this is very important. When I go to cut that second set of holes out of this other board, they're going to be larger obviously, but I can't do that same method where I drew these lines in order to find the center point of the second set of circles. If I do that, it will be centered on that board, but it will no longer line up with this hole perfectly. In order to get that secondary hole to line up perfectly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace the hole, I'm gonna rough cut that material away, I'm going to flush trim these two together on the router, and then I'm going to just remove material using a rabbiting bit. Here we go, now our baffle is really starting to come together. You can see much more what I mean by having the flush mount around the outside of the subwoofer. Now I do need to do some more detail work on this before I attach it to the rest of the enclosure. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna add some roundovers again to these edges here to soften them up. And my plan is I'm gonna have carpet on this face, whereas everything else on the back of the box, it's all gonna be a special Duratex paint. I'm doing it that way because when you flip down the seats, you'll be able to see this, so I want it to be finished off with the carpet, but the rest of that is going to be hidden behind the panels, so I just want it nice and dark and hidden. But the other detail thing I wanna do on the baffles here is I wanna cut some lines just using the table saw. It will just be a very subtle look, but it will give me a spot to kind of tuck the carpet in from each direction, so you'll see kind of these carpet tuck lines if you look really close, just a minor little detail. Through the magic of video editing, we've now added that round over. We've added those cuts on the table saw. You can actually do quite a bit with just a little. I'm liking the look of this panel. So now we can wrap up assembly and get the baffle boards installed on the box. Check it out. I've got those baffles attached and I did a couple of other things off camera. I wanted to soften up each of these edges. So around this edge, I ran a quarter inch roundover. On this edge here, it's not possible to really do a roundover. So I just did a light sanding by hand. And then around the rest of these edges, I did a half inch roundover. That way it just gives the box a much more finished look. And it's a little bit easier to handle going in and out of the vehicle. Now something else you may have noticed here, see this line? I actually did this on the table saw as well. I just set my fence here and measured that distance. And I just had the table saw blade cutting in about an eighth of an inch. And again, this is so I can have a transition from the carpet to the textured paint job that I'm gonna do on this side. The gap here 
gives me a precise spot to cut that carpet. It will give it a really nice finished look. Also a quick side note, show of hands down in the comments, how many of you guys noticed that I forgot to add those 45s? Luckily I was able to get them in after I put the baffle already on. Thank goodness, but those are good to go in there now too. Now for the sake of time, there's a couple of things that I did off camera. The first is I painted around the subwoofer cutout holes with some black flat paint. That way you can't see any of the raw wood between the carpet transition to the ring. And the other thing is on the back of the box here, we applied some roll-on Duratex. It's kind of like a truck bed coating, totally different product, but that gives you an idea of something what it's like. I actually did a review here on the channel about it before, but what this does, it gives us a nice textured, durable finish. And you can see I also added these pieces here. These will give me a piece for the beauty panel to attach to in the back of the trunk. And I also added these pieces. These pieces are for the amplifier rack. They serve as standoffs to further isolate the amplifier rack from the subwoofer enclosure. And the other purpose of these standoffs is so that we can drill holes through our amp rack plate and we can attach zip ties and have the head of the zip tie on the back side and allow clearance for this to still be bolted to the box. Now again, for the sake of time, I did the carpet wrapping off camera as well. I'll link a bunch of videos down in the video description for you guys that I've done before about upholstery, but here you can see our completed enclosure. I'm really happy with how clean and simple this looks, especially with those added little lines. I'm curious though, have you guys ever tried this little line technique where you just use a table saw to add an accent? Let me know. With the enclosure installed in the vehicle, once we fold down the seats, you can see how impressive these subs look sitting back there. And of course we can fold the seats back up and fold down that pass through hole. And I've got to say, these look kind of intimidating almost facing through that hole there. I can't wait for you guys to see these powered up. We're gonna save that for the next video where we're installing the amplifiers. So in the next video, we're gonna be installing all of the amplifiers by building a custom amplifier rack and by connecting all of the wiring. To see that video along with future car audio build logs, car audio lessons, and product overviews, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. A special thanks to JL Audio for providing all of the speakers and subwoofers for this build. You can learn more about the W3 lineup at the links down in the video description. Also a big shout out to Bryson, Mike, Ali, Jared, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible, and I'll see you guys in the next one.